there. Welcome to another edition of Small Talk Wednesday. I'm your host, Julie St. Cyr from the Big West Conference. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody that if you miss an episode of Small Talk Wednesday, they are available at the Big West Conference, IGTV, and Facebook accounts, as well as the watch page at our website, www.bigwest.org. And now moving on for today, I've got two coaches from one of our newest members, CSU Bakersfield, joining me. We've got head coach from the men's soccer team, Richie Grant, and the women's soccer head coach, Sebastian Vecchio. Not many probably know that you guys had a connection long before you were Bakersfield coaches. So let's flash back to 2004 when Sebastian transferred to Memphis as a goalkeeper, where you actually set a school record in goals against average, and standing on the sidelines was Richie, the coach for the Tigers. So, Coach Grant, what was Sebastian like as a player? Um, that's great. You're, you're probably making us both feel a little old, but me certainly <laughs> older. Uh, it was, it was uh, I, I don't want to speak for Sebas because he'll have his own opportunity, but it was, a, it was a uniquely special time for both of us in him and his playing career and me and my coaching career. It's still uh, one of the most enjoyable teams um, that I've ever had the, uh, the opportunity to coach. And um, it wouldn't have happened without Sebastian. And I'm going to use a cliche. I'm not just saying that because he's, he's <laughs> on. But there was a transformation in the path to success there. And it came from bad season to good season. Um, but it was the moment between wanting to fix a bad season and improve uh, that Sebastian took control of the program with some other key players. And it was their determination, uh, their training habits, uh, their wanting the next year to look different, May 2004, a special year. And you can probably even tell still to this day, that group of players was uh, had a really big impact on, on my career. But I think the key, what, what Coach Grant said, the transformation that we went over in the spring from one season to the next um, and what his coaching staff was very good to uh, to us in terms of he got the best out of every single player that was on that team. Obviously, a, a very tough and demanding coach, but but that spring, um, the way that that I describe it is that he, they they broke us down to the ground and built us back up in the spring in every single in every single aspect of of, of the war of the phrase, you know, physically and mentally, and, and we were ready to go the next year. Would having Coach Grant be at Bakersfield, was that a pull when that job opened? Was that a drive to maybe want to go there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was, you know, at the time I was at TCU, um, you know, coaching as an assistant coach in Texas. And, and, you know, when you get this opportunity of moving across the country, you know, even though as a, as a grown-up, it can still be, you know, scary. You know, you have your whole family, you have a good situation. I was in a great program was coming off a, an NCAA tournament appearance. So having Coach Grant and his family um, here in Bakersfield m made that decision easier and, and more appealing, you know. And when you to a new place, um, having people that you know, having people that you feel comfortable with and, and, and you know, that are friends. You know, they're my friends and Coach Grant has been a mentor for a long time. And beyond that, we have a friendship. I think he's kids grow up and we, we, we share many conversations and stories and um, obviously having him there, uh, it, was, it was a big plus. Uh, Sebastian was there when, when my first son was born, uh, <laughs> first kid. And regardless of how good of a goalkeeper he was in college, I still wouldn't let him hold him, you know, because I was afraid to drop him. But he was there the day he was born. So, there's a, there's a lot of history there. Well, they say coaches see their student athletes like their children sometimes. It's one big family. So, Coach Grant, you get to have front row seats to see Sebastian just excel in the career that he dreamed of. What is that like? Um, it, it's brilliant, you know, because it's such a, such a unique profession. And we don't get into this profession for financial gain. It's a career path. It's, it's mostly because we love the sport that we're in. And when you see people really passionate about it, accomplishing their goals, it, it's, very, it's very gratifying. It's, a, it's also a great career path to choose. So it, we knew with Sebastian that he was going to be successful. 
And I think that's why we work so hard to build successful teams because success just breeds success. And the people within those teams tend to do well at whatever endeavor they do. Uh, so he was surrounded by a lot of really good people. And then Sebastian, is there anything that you took away from Coach Grant's style back when you were a player that you incorporate now in your coaching? Yeah, absolutely. Coach, coach is, um, you know, he's a person of high character. Um, and he, what he believes in is non-negotiable. Okay, so he's very true to himself and he knows what he wants to accomplish and he knows what he wants to do. That consistency that he provides us as a coach um, it's kind of what I took, you know, took away the most. So do you guys ever pick each other's brains and get some strategies in coaching or do you guys stay, you know, your own ways? I would say we do. And I like that, you know, because, and, and I'm a big fan of picking the brains of all coaches um, because the crossover is really cool, particularly in college athletics, because there's a common ground for all of us. But I think there's moments for both of us during the season a big game coming up, a dilemma with discipline, um, an injury. And he has this beautiful modern coaching board in his office. And I love going in and seeing that. And I have an old chalkboard in my office. You know? <laughs> but those conversations to me are, are so important to be able to bounce off. And once we have that dialogue, it's the best kind of lunch break we can get on campus, you know. Do you guys continue to build on that family friendship outside of the world of Bakersfield and soccer? Yeah, absolutely. A little, a little bit too much, I will say, because I, I have younger kids than that, that Coach Grant does, right? So I have a, a three and a half year old and, and my second son was born here in Bakersfield. He's, he's just turned one. Um, so every single toy that Coach Grant and his wife don't want ends up in my house right now. So my garage is full. I try to share this with them that we don't need any more toys. But but yeah, you can, you can tell that the relationship continues and continues to grow. Oh, that's great. So I want to end the interview with just one more question. So Coach Grant wouldn't let you hold his newborn. Did you <laughs> let him hold your newborn? Uh. No. <laughs> He's a he, cried. he cried every time he came through the office at the beginning. Did you scare him? Yes. <laughs> I, I tell him too many stories. You know, when I put him to sleep, I tell him stories about my playing day and Coach Grant's in it. So he wants no part of it. Oh, that's awesome. 